Today's video is a practical beginner's guide to building desktop apps with Electron. By the end of this video, you will have built a desktop app that's installable on Mac OS, Windows, and Linux using nothing but HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You'll learn how to combine APIs from the web, Node.js, and Electron to build a desktop screen capture. It creates its own native menus, captures a video stream from your system, and can write the raw video file to your file system. Now, if you have no idea how Electron works, make sure to check out my 100 seconds of code video on that topic. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and grab the full source code for this project on Fireship.io. Now, before we jump into the code and turn you into an Electron developer, there's one thing you should know. A lot of people like to talk shit about Electron. And to be honest, a lot of the criticism is valid. Electron apps bundle Chromium and Node.js out of the gate, and that tends to lead to a very large app size even for a simple app. On top of that, running Chromium can be resource intensive, so your app will probably use more CPU and RAM than a comparable app in Objective-C or c -sharp. But here's the thing, these drawbacks don't matter very much for most developers when it comes to the big picture. Because it's fun. It's fun to do bad things. If you're a web or Node.js developer, Electron offers an amazing developer experience. And it makes desktop apps a practical business decision for companies that would otherwise not consider them. Even big companies with tons of talent and cash still choose Electron because it makes more business sense. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is that you build an awesome user experience, which you can absolutely do with Electron. And your users don't know or care what technology you use to build the app. I think Winston Churchill said it best. Electron is the worst desktop architecture, except for all the others we've tried. Now that we have that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the desktop app we're building today. It's a simple screen recorder. It takes one of the windows that you have opened on your desktop and turns it into a video stream. And then we preview that video stream in our Electron app. When we click the record button, it will turn the stream into an actual raw video file. When you click stop, it will open another native menu, this time asking where you want to save the file output. And lastly, it writes the raw file to your system. So this will be a really fun project, because you'll need to use Node.js for certain things, web technologies for other things, and Electron APIs as well. This tutorial is designed for you to follow along, but we'll be moving at a very quick pace, so feel free to pause or slow down the playback speed. To get started, we'll first want to generate some initial boilerplate code. To do that, I'll be using an awesome tool called Electron Forge, along with its option for plain vanilla JavaScript. But if you have a preferred framework, there's all kinds of starter projects out there that you can use. And the code in this project should be relatively easy to port over to one of those. Step one is to open up the command line and run npx create electron app with the name of your app. Go ahead and open that up, and you'll see Electron Forge has given us a little starter project. That's nice and all, but towards the end of the video, we'll look at how Electron Forge can help us build the actual distributables that people can install on their system. Now, if we open the source directory, you can see we have an index.html and CSS. The HTML is the entry point to our front-end UI, or the render process. Then we have index.js, which is the entry point to our main process. At this point, let's go ahead and fire up the app to make sure it's working. Run npm start from the command line, and it should launch the application on your system. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't do hot reloading like you might be used to if you work with a web framework. If you make some changes and want to see them reflected in the app, come down here to the command line, type in rs in the same terminal, and your app will restart. Let's open up this index.js file to take a closer look at how Electron works. Every Electron app has exactly one main process, which is created by this index.js file. Up here at the top, you can see we're importing two things from Electron, app and browser window. App is used to control the lifecycle of the app, and it uses an event-based API. Let's take a look at some examples. The main event we want to listen to is ready, so we say app on ready, run this function. This event will fire once when the app is actually ready, and you can run whatever initialization logic you want here. Now, Electron Forge already set this up for us, but feel free to implement your own logic here. If we look below that, you can see we're handling a couple of other events as well, like window all closed. Because Macs have different operating system behaviors than Windows, you can run platform-specific code by checking the process platform value. This is a special value provided by Electron, and if it's a Mac, it'll be Darwin or Win32 for Windows. So our app has one main process, but it can have multiple render processes going at the same time. A render process is an instance of Chromium, so you can think of each render process as being a tab or window in the browser. We create one by instantiating a browser window, and there's a bunch of different options we can pass here, but I'm going to set the node integration to true. That allows us to access Node.js globals directly in our front-end code. So that gives us an empty browser window. Now we use load file to load our index.html into it. If we look at the HTML, you can see it's nothing but a hello world. In fact, we don't even have any JavaScript running on our front end yet. Let's change that by creating a file called render.js, and then we'll add a script tag pointing to that file here in our HTML. And make sure to use the defer attribute so the script loads after the HTML. While we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and add Bulma CSS to the head of the document as well. That'll make our UI look a little more polished. 
Then down here in the body, we'll add a video element to preview the actual output that's being recorded. Down below that, we'll add three buttons. The first button will start recording, the second button will stop recording, and the third one allows us to choose the actual video source from the system. Now let's jump into our render.js file. If you're a web developer, you can think of this as your front-end code, and it has access to everything that you would expect in the browser. Let's start by simply making a reference to the HTML elements in the DOM. We can use document query selector to grab the video element, and then we can grab our three buttons by using document get element by ID. Our first challenge is getting access to all of the available screens on the user's system to record. Luckily, Electron has a desktop capture module that we can use right here in our render process. Let's go ahead and import the module using require. Electron actually makes the require function available in the browser. Now that we have that imported, we'll go ahead and set up a custom async function called get video sources, and we'll assign this function as the event handler when our video select button is clicked. In the function body, we can get access to all of the windows or screens in the system by calling desktop capture get sources. This method returns a promise, so we'll need to use the await keyword to await the actual value. The value is an array of objects where each object is a window or screen available on the user's computer that we can record. And now that we have access to this data, we just need to implement some kind of UI element for the user to select the screen they want to record. That'd be a good use case for a native pop-up menu. Electron has a menu class, but it's actually designed to run on the main process. We can access things on the main process using a module called remote. This is one way to handle inter-process communication or IPC. It's a very important concept, but all you need to know for now is that it allows us to build native menus directly in our front-end code here. We'll set a variable for the menu itself, and then we'll call menu build from template. This method expects an array of objects, where each object represents a different menu item. And an easy way to create that array is with JavaScript's array map method to convert our array of input sources into an array of menu items. For each source, we'll return an object where the label is the source name, and then we'll register an event handler for click that calls another function that we have not yet implemented yet called select source. And lastly, we simply call pop-up on this menu. Now if we restart the app and click that button, you can see it gives us a list of all the windows on our system. At this point, clicking on an item doesn't do anything. That's because we need to implement our select source function. This will also be an async function, and the first thing we do in here is set the inner text of our video select button to the name of the source. Then to capture video from the source, we need to set up a few options here. We'll set audio to false, and then we'll set the Chrome media source to desktop and the Chrome media source ID to the source ID we pass to the function. From here, we'll use the browser's built-in navigator API to create a streaming video. We can await navigator media devices get user media with the constraint options that we defined before. This will provide a stream of video output of whatever's happening in that window. So all we have to do is grab our HTML video element and set its source object to the stream. We'll click play, and that should give us a real-time feed of the window. Go ahead and restart the app, and then select a video source. This time, you should see a real-time preview of the video feed in your Electron app. Okay, so now that we have a stream of video footage from the user's system, how do we record it and then save it as a video file that we can then play back? One way is to use the browser's built-in media recorder. I'll set the recorder up as a global variable, and then set an empty array for the recorded chunks. This would allow you to potentially record video in multiple segments. From there, we'll go back down to our select source function, and we'll set up options for the mime type on the media recorder. Then we'll instantiate the media recorder class, passing it the stream as the first argument. Now the recorder can be controlled by the user, and it has an event-based API. There are two events that we care about here, on data available and on stop. We'll define handlers for these events as separate functions. When the video data becomes available, we want to simply grab it and push it to our recorded chunks array. That's easy enough, but when the recording has been fully stopped, we want to take those recorded chunks and convert them into a video file. We do that by creating a blob, and a blob is essentially just a data structure to handle raw data, like a video file. But what's kind of confusing is we don't actually want a blob here, we want a buffer, which is also an object for representing raw data. We create the buffer by calling buffer from, and then awaiting the blob's array buffer. I realize that's pretty weird, but it's just what we have to do to get the data in the proper format to be played back as video. But now that we have this raw data, we need to give the user a way to select where they want to save it on their system. Electron has a very powerful dialog module that runs on the main process, so we can import that from our remote module. It allows us to easily create native dialogs to do things like save and open files. In this case, we'll await show save dialog, which will resolve to the file path that the user has selected. We can customize the button to say save video, and then we'll set up a default path that timestamps the video. 
And now that we have the user selected file path, we simply need to write that file to the system. And we can do that, of course, in Node.js with the built-in FS or file system module. It's a Node module, so we'll need to require it. And the function we're interested in is write file. We can come down here and put it to use by passing it the file path and then the buffer as the argument for the raw data. It's a callback-based API, so we can pass in a third argument as a function that will just console log that the video was saved successfully. And we're done. Your desktop app is now a fully functional screen recorder. But I did promise you one more thing, and that's to package the app for different operating systems like Mac, Windows, and Linux. Sounds pretty hard? Well, not so much. Electron Forge basically does all this for us automatically out of the box. Open up the terminal and run npm run make. It will automatically detect your operating system and then build the distributable for that OS. I happen to be on Windows right now, so when I run this command, it creates an out directory, and then you can find the executable in here to run your application natively. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. I think the key takeaway here is that if you know JavaScript, then you can start building desktop apps today. And if you want to see more project-based videos like this on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.